This is from joe.co.uk. Chinese whistleblower claims first COVID outbreak was intentional. And I can believe it. This is a guy who defected, I think it was like a couple decades ago, 1987. He was held in prisons because he has been fighting for democracy. But apparently he still has individual, he still knows, he still has sources. And they provided him, provided him information that said that in 2019 at the World Military Games, China released a virus. Now that's his claim. Wait, wait, wait. Where were the World Military Games in, in September 2019? They were in Wuhan, In China. Wuhan. And, nine th- and there were 9,000 athletes, many of whom were sick with some pneumonia-like disease. Mm. I've had, I've actually had members of that reach uh, reach out to me afterwards or family members and say, hey, you know, my, you know, I'm not gonna say which family member it was, but someone I was related to was on that trip. They came back, they were sick. Yep. We got sick, we passed that along. We have no idea what that was. And it's been so long now that we can't, you know, really get tested for it. So we're not sure what happened. But a lot of people were saying the symptoms were very, were very, were very COVID-like. So I'll say this, I don't know about intentionally, I think when you look at the lab leak evidence, you would be insane not to conclude this leak from a lab, whether it was, you know, if it was intentionally done, that's something totally different. But we actually have a director claims that he went in November, or I'm sorry, uh, yes, in November, he went to uh, US intelligence and said, this thing that just happened, this wasn't an intentional release of a virus. And the funny thing is, we, we, we have the benefit of hindsight. We can look back at these past couple of years and be like, why didn't they listen? Well, think about it. The World Military Games happens and some people got sick. So what? So you got a bunch of athletes who get sick and then you don't even notice because not not that many get sick. And then some guy comes to you and says, people got sick because China intentionally released a virus. They're going to be like, what are you talking about? And like, especially fine. the game's you know, went off without a hitch. Especially Whoever if wants. they use the phrase, you know, if they say, oh, it's a bioweapon, secret Chinese project, military. It just it, it kind of fits that sort of thing where and you know, saying this for someone who's in the intel community, um, you you get a lot of walk-ins, right? You get a lot of walk-ins. You get people coming all the time with this story, that story. And because of the Iraq WMD scenario, because of that situation, anything that kind of falls into that bucket of uh, NBC, not NBC the company, but uh, nuclear, biological, chemical, there's always there always is a little bit of hesitancy from people in the community because of that experience to really jump on one of those things. And there's hesitancy from people that, you know, your middle managers, et cetera, to pass that on to the higher ups, the generals or the DASDs, or certainly anyone in the White House, give it to you know the president, just because of that situation, because you don't want to be the next Colin Powell, the, you know, et cetera. Was, were this like, uh, I'm, I'm curious, was, uh, was COVID uh, more negatively impacting Asian people? Was it, wasn't there something about like people who had, uh, pe- some people had more ACE2 receptors based on their heritage? Yeah, I thought it was Asian men. No, I thought Asian men were less likely. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Ian, Sorry. You, you want to, you, yeah. you want to Google that? Or but that would be that? something I want to look up. Yeah. Because I remember seeing something about um, less ACE2 receptors based on, you know, different parts of the world and stuff like that. So I'd be curious. Um, I could I could be wrong about this. I don't know. Do you see anything, uh, Ian? No. Uh, is this here from E Turbo News? It says East Asians and men have more than say oh, white yeah, Europeans more. and other oh, okay. more receptors, receptors, which means yeah. they're more susceptible that's to this. That's thinking. just according to this. I don't know, but that's so, unconfirmed. So, so is, re- regardless of the outcome, I think it's interesting. China's accused the U.S. of releasing this, but. It was a joint Chinese, China and U.S. research. There was joint China U.S. research being done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So, right. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. This also says that men have more than women by by nature. Ace Probably bigger receptors. lungs, right? Bigger yeah. lungs, yeah. Yeah, that makes so sense. So, what do you think? Do you believe this guy? I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I do know just from an analysis standpoint, I could certainly see a scenario where. Someone in not necessarily Xi Jinping, but somebody in China says, hey, we have this situation on our hands. It looks like this thing is breaking out. Why should we be the only ones who have to take a hit on this? Right. Why should we be the only ones who have to take the economic hit, the supply chain hit, the monetary hit? They're going through a monetary situation right now with Evergrande. Um, yeah, that's I don't, breaking out. So I, the, why the, not? Why not just let it ride? The intentional thing, I'm not sure I, there's enough evidence of, but a lab leak. Right, I think, a lab leak, but a lab leak that you don't respond to immediately. Right. Or, or look at what happened with Fukushima. You think like you think you can cover it up. Yeah, yeah, there's like just 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 get rid of it quickly and don't have to admit anything. But but 
you know, I guess the challenge is they didn't shut down travel to Wuhan. They allowed outbound travel, didn't they? They did. Yeah, so it doesn't sound like they were trying to... Uh, so, it sounded like they were like, you know what? It hit us. It's going to hit everybody else. So when, when Chernobyl happened, and um, one thing that HBO totally missed in the Chernobyl miniseries, which I think is quite good, but one thing that... And my wife coming from having been in the Soviet Union um, always points out that, that they totally missed is that if you look at the dates, Chernobyl happens in late April. What is May 1st? right? May 1st is May Day, yep. right? In the Soviet Union. This is a huge day of celebration. It's parades. People are outside. People are, you know, garlands of flowers, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that happens in the Chernobyl area and across Belarus, where um, a lot of the winds were blowing it. So, be, so this fallout, they allowed that to go on, even though they knew the meltdown had occurred. Wow because yep. they didn't want to admit it to the West. Yep, and I think it was only because they detected radiation in Sweden or something. Right. That anyone started to realize what was going on with Chernobyl. All because people in Sweden started getting sick and people, you know, they started detecting things. They said, what's going on? Hey, Russia, or hey, Soviet Union, do you have something you want like to tell us? Yeah. Right, and so what's amazing though is because we have this situation now where, what's the difference between the U.S. relationship with China and the CCP versus the U.S. relationship in the USSR? There is a monetary, financial, and a deep economic relationship between the U.S. and China that the U.S. and the Soviet Union never had. Our elites are getting rich off of this supply chain, off of the exploitation of, China, of cheap Chinese labor, the Uyghurs, et cetera, everything else. You don't have that now. So you don't have this huge, I mean, look at all the movies, the cultural John um, Cena. attack, right, John Cena going out and speaking really, really bad Mandarin, um, <laughs> apologizing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Taiwan, 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 <laughs> 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 Um, that's his little thing. No one has any idea what you just yeah, said. You oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Taiwan. I'm so sorry, Taiwan's not a country. You can't, you, you can't <laughs> see me. Taiwan's not a country. Yeah, you can't see me. You can't see me. Um, I love how they mock the Baitswa, but then these Baitswa in the U.S. get on their knees for them. Which is why they mock them, because they know they're lesser. It's crazy, isn't it? But so, so that means this is, white left, by the way. Right, so this is the situation, and then they... Because we are, and like our elites are so in bed with them, you don't have that situation. Like, like Moscow, do you want to tell us something? Beijing, do you want to tell us something? I'm sure behind the scenes, you know, there's, there's quite a bit, but then a lot of this was kept. And Peter Navarro has a book coming out. I think his book just hit number three on Amazon, where he was talking about having been in the room with Fauci. Because um, keep in mind, Fauci obviously knows about all this stuff or has the ability to pick up the phone and say, hey, did we you know, something going on over in Wuhan. Where's that guy? Where's that Peter guy? You know, did he have something going on with, with this? Does he know what's happening? And, you know, we talked to or, what, Peter Doshak, not, not Peter Navarro. Hmm. And, and Navarro says yeah, that moment never happened, right? You'd think like if, if it's a scene in a movie, right? You think the scientists would come in, oh my gosh, Wuhan, that's where the lab is. That's where we were doing right. the funding. What's what's happening? And then like Jeff Goldblum runs, rushes in, I told you, I told you. It would be considered bad writing. Yeah, right. It would. right. It would be like the scientist runs in and goes, ladies and gentlemen, a, a virus has broken out in a city with a virus gain of function research lab. And people watching it go, oh, come on. Please. Come on. You no, make it, it doesn't make any make sense. It, make it a little like, bit more exciting than that obvious. Right. Where's the, like, where's the farming village? And no, then like I mean, the peasants get right. sick. And the bat, and the, the bat and lands the bat, in someone's soup. It yeah, gets <laughs> yes. in the soup and then it gets to, what's in, in, uh, in Outbreak? I think it's the, the bat, you know, and then it bites somebody and then they go to a casino in Macau and there's right. like some Americans there. and like. But, right. but you know what? Like, you, if they were making a movie about this it would yeah. literally be like a guy working in the research you know wearing in the, in the research lab wearing the suit and then he would be like handling a bat and it would bite his finger and he'd go exactly yeah ah, ah, and like uh, wash it like, like, the stand, like, like yeah. peter, peter he parker would, a little he'd look bit, around yeah. and yeah. be like nobody saw and then he'd go out and wash and be <laughs> yeah, like yeah the stand well one thing and just some coughing later one one thing that also <laughs> that pe one thing also that that i think people should consider is that even though they always say there's no evidence of of um bats being sold at this wet market. Uh, keep in mind, though, that the standards for control over these type of things in China are just not that big. So there are also economic incentives that, hey, if you're somebody that maybe just works, you're a worker there, you're a janitor or something, and you see, hey, there's a couple of bats, it looks like the experiment's over, 
they won't miss one, they won't miss two. Yeah. Or maybe you know you're selling them off the back of the truck to a guy, and then he goes and takes them out into the city. It doesn't have to be at the wet market; it just be some guy he knows, and maybe he's been doing this for a while and has no idea, right? Yeah. So again, right there, there, there's so many permutations you could think of my, to create my, a lab leak theory that all of which are very valid. And if I wanted to go, uh, you know, if we were trying to go from like the most plausible scenario, like research was being done and then there was a lab leak because of, you know, incompetence to the most and completely implausible one, I would love to just, you know, theorize about Xi Jinping trying to gain the ability to control bats and wield them he's, like some kind of villain. He's doing that. But, anyway. then, but then the bats, you know, break out of control and they were trying to use a virus to control their minds. And then now all hell breaks. Seems loose like and, more of a Kim Jong-un thing. Yeah, I, I can see Kim Jong Un being into that. So what, yeah. you're, what you're saying is Navarro was in the room when Fauci learned about it, but he didn't react. No, no, no. Well, basically, yes. And so you'd expect so the, the lead part scientist the to be like, "Oh my gosh, let's look in." But because he didn't react, it was kind of like, "Why didn't he react to that?" Right. So then eventually it becomes like the political appointees in the administration, and this is what Navarro's book is entirely about. And he's been he's actually calling me like a minute ago. Um, that you know he's just he's trying to tell people the story of what actually happened to say hey, we found out all this stuff about Wuhan, and then we see Fauci's name on it. We see NIH and NIAID, and we said, excuse me, are we funding this stuff? Tony, what's what's going on here, man? Like, what's just, you know, we're trying to fight this thing. We don't want people to be getting sick. D do you know something that you'd, you'd like to tell us? Because keep in mind that when you go back and watch those old videos of Fauci where he's talking about the need for gain-of-function research, what does he say? He says, we need to do this because if there is a zoonotic spillover event, we need to be prepared for it. We need to have um, elements on the shelf or resources or at least just the that knowledge. sounds like total bullcrap. To be able to prepare for something. So, But just go, go with me on this, right? So it's like, okay, let's take you at your word. If that's the case... Why didn't you have that moment of saying, oh my gosh, they were studying something just like this. Hold on, let me call up Sher Jung Lee. We'll, we'll figure out what the best, because you know it's like you create the disease so you can create the cure. So why didn't that phone call ever take place? I remember seeing that video of Dr. Dr. Fauci being questioned by Rand Paul, and he is shaking. Yeah. Yeah. And that was crazy. People noticed, and they like zoomed in on his hand. Completely and, like, and entirely wrong. <laughs> and then it so turns weird. out that it was all true. We got leaked documents and more and more information keeps coming out. I don't understand how Fauci is not already under investigation. Yeah, he said they were not funding well, gain of research. So, oh, he so like look at this. Look, if, if, if you, you actually look at the that. first finding of drastic in these documents, the first finding of it was, so keep in mind, I mentioned that um, there was that New York Times article from 2017 that talked about the return of gain of function funding. However, this was 2018. So the question is, if gain of function research has been turned back on by Francis Collins, who's the director of the NIH, he's Fauci's boss, is Collins. Um, so why are they going to DARPA if it's been turned on at NIH? Here's the rub. NIH instituted something called, uh, I believe it's the PC3 framework by and, law, by and which they were going to, and Dr. Erbright is part of this at Rutgers, that you are supposed to submit it to this group essentially to get sign off to say, is this going to create a lethal virus? Is this something that does constitute dangerous gain of function? So Dashak knows that and the Wuhan Institute knows that. And so they just tweak it enough so they can argue or what? Not even. That framework is only under NIH. So they say, well, if we go to these guys, we can't tell them all the stuff we really want to do. But if we go to DARPA, maybe right. we can get some funding and they don't have that framework. Right. But at I, least DARPA has, goes and says, Common sense. We're not going to do this, guys. I, I have a feeling we're, they were, we're trying like, to circumvent the system. If you look at the, the the amount of data and evidence that's been coming out implicating Fauci, we're just like a month away from like a video of Fauci holding a phone and like with Peter Daszak at the Wuhan lab doing a selfie. And he's like, hey, what's up, guys? We're doing gain of function research on bad coronaviruses <laughs> and we're going to increase human transmissibility. And then he high fives. And then that video comes out and Rand Paul is like, explain this video that you took. You are wrong, Rand. That was just us well, in a lab doing modifications to chimeric viruses that would make them enter humans more easily. Well, so, so, That's not gain of function research. <laughs> so go back to it, right? Look at what Fauci's done in the past because he had that huge, very public flip-flop on mask wearing, right? Early on, he says, don't do it. Then later he says, I had to say that at the time because we had to shore up the mask supply for doctors and for frontline healthcare workers. But now that that time has passed, the supply chain is working, we are going to open it for everybody else. So I had to say it at the time and it was for the right reasons. That's exactly what he'll do. He'll say, I had to say that at the time, but gain of function, of course we were doing gain of function right. and we had to do gain of well, function. Well, I don't think 
he'll ever do that because that would be admitting to lying to Congress, which is perjury. And that's that's actually something where he's got himself in a little bit of a trap. That's and, why he was shaken. And then just right. gets a pardon. But, uh, I mean, my, can he just say it then get a pardon by Biden? Yeah. Biden, Biden could, the pardon power of the presidency is a plenary power, which means it's absolute. Um, it cannot huh. be overturned by it cannot be overturned by uh, a, a proceeding president. So like like Trump can't come in and overturn one of Obama's pardons. Right. And interestingly enough, it can't even be over. It can't be overturned by Congress, but the Supreme Court, it can't even be overturned by yourself. So if you are president and you pardon someone, that's it. They're done. And you can pardon for more than just what they've been convicted of. Right. So this is this, the idea of a blanket pardon, and that's actually never been challenged. So General, uh, Gerald Ford does this famously for Nixon um, after, in, in the, after the events of Watergate, and he does this sort of like blanket pardon, blanket amnesty for Watergate. And essentially just nobody decided, the Congress right. said, fine, whatever, we're not gonna challenge this. But it, it, so that is sort of the leading theory that you can give someone a blanket pardon, but it's not actually been completely tested. It's just that no one's ever gone down that road. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you wanna see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. where you can leave comments and super chat and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.